What is up, my Kendama family? Welcome back to the Dama Dojo. I'm D Banks. This is episode number three. Uh, I'm so glad to have y'all here with me. I know it's been a while. Y'all probably like, where has this guy been? I'm just trying to level up at Kendama, man. As you know, it's a very addictive sport. And I've just been out really trying to level up. Uh, I know I said I'd be making some noob videos for y'all, some edits so y'all can see my progress. But I promise it's way easier. Just go follow me at Skippy So Drippy on IG. That's where I'm posting a lot of content uh, and the stuff I've been working on. But we are not here today to talk about my progress. Today we are here to talk about different kendama shapes. Most people would say, D-Banks, aren't all kendamas the same shape? I'm here to tell you today that is not the case. We're gonna see what goes into a different kendama shape, why companies make different shapes, how the shapes have changed over time, uh, and hopefully help you make a better choice when you go to uh, pick up your next kendama. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Dama Dojo, episode number three, all about shapes. Let's get it. Okay, so obviously all kendamas or most kendamas have the same shape, right? They have three cups, big cup, small cup, bottom cup, uh, a tama, a spike, and they kind of look the same. What we're going to find out today is that when we're talking about the shape of a kendama, uh, size really matters. Back in the day, shapes were much smaller, much more difficult to play for people with different hand sizes and different play styles. As Kendama progressed as a sport, as the companies uh, progressed, they started making bigger, easier to play Kendamas. And we'll see uh, some examples of that size change in today's episode. Uh, but first, let's talk about what goes into the shape of a Kendama overall. What parts of the Kendama are we looking at when we're talking about the shape? First thing that we're going to look at is the overall height of the Kendama. So from the bottom bottom of the base cup all the way up to the spike. This makes a difference in your play style in the sense that if you have smaller hands, uh, a smaller kendama uh, with regard to height might play well for you. But if you got bigger hands like myself, I tend to prefer a larger kendama, one that's a little bit taller. I think it's easier to catch. So when you're doing things like ken flips uh, and juggles, when you have a larger hand, it just feels a little better. Uh, you can kind of see that it goes almost all the way down to the bottom of my palm here. Uh, and that, you know, this is a decent sized kendama. So the next thing you're gonna wanna look at is the weight of the kendama. So we'll see some examples of heavier, heavier and lighter kendamas. Anytime you get a kendama, anytime I get a kendama, the first thing I do is put it on the scale and I'll weigh the ken and I'll weigh the tama. Most people want these to be of uh, pretty close weights, right? The reason for that is when you're doing things like juggles, you know, if you have two objects that you're juggling that have vastly different weights, it's just gonna feel weird. And so it's nice when they have a good balance and they're kind of the same weight. Uh, some folks prefer lighter kendamas, some folks prefer heavier kendamas. It's just a matter of preference. You will find your own as you play more and more kendamas. Weight is definitely an important uh, aspect of the kendama and the kendama shape itself. We're also going to take a look at the size of the tama itself. So uh, what we're going to measure is, or what we're going to take a look at, is the millimeter uh, diameter. Diameter? Is it the diameter? Jesus. The diameter of the tama. Uh, this is again just a comfort thing. So when you're doing juggles and you're throwing the tama around, if you have larger hands, a larger tama might feel better in your hand, uh, and vice versa for small folks with smaller hands. We're gonna take a look at the size of the bevel. So the bevel is the hole in the tama, and this plays uh, quite a few different roles. So for for one, uh, it's a larger bevel is gonna be easier to catch on the spike in general. Uh, also, the bevel size is gonna play into your different stalls, right? So if you're doing in birds, uh, nightingales, underbirds, the size of the bevel really makes a huge difference into how well it locks in uh, to that stall point. We'll also take a look at the length of the spike. And that of course plays into how easy or how difficult it is to get the spike onto the tama when you're doing certain tricks. And uh, especially for tricks like J-sticks, where you need that, uh, it was called a jumping stick, J-stick for short, where you need that horizontal leverage to sort of get the can going. A shorter spike can sometimes make that a little more difficult depending on on the size of the bevel and how well those match up. And a longer spike can sometimes make that a little bit easier. Uh, another interesting feature of the kendama shape will be the thickness of the ken itself. I think it does play into that comfort level uh, when you're holding the kendama and just how good it feels in your hand. I have a few shapes that are really slim right here that don't feel too good uh, for me to play. And so I just prefer a, a little bit thicker of a sword. I try to eyeball it, but it's really hard to know until you put it in your hand uh, and find out. 
But yeah, sword thickness, I think, can also play into uh, your play style a bit. We're also going to take a look at the width of the serrato. Um, and the serrato is the piece that's composed of the big cup and the small cup here. That'll play into things like gunslingers, when you got to give it a flick and it needs to go around your finger in that motion, like you're, I don't know, some kind of Wild West guy uh, or girl. Don't get me wrong. The width of the serrato will make a huge difference in how easy it is to kind of get your finger in there and get that leverage. And then everyone's favorite, of course, we're gonna look at the size of the cups. And I think this is where we're gonna see the biggest change over time in the size of the kendama. Anything that's gonna have to make contact with the cups uh, or where the tama has to make contact with the cup, the size of the cup is gonna make a huge difference in how easy that is to do. And that also goes for the balancing cup tricks, like lunars, this is on my left hand, so if it falls, don't blame me. Lighthouses, all of those tricks as well, where the cup's making contact with the tama. Uh, cup size is gonna play a huge role in that. And another piece of the cup size that we'll look at uh, that we didn't quite touch on earlier is the thickness of the cup itself. So this portion here, or the cup rim, I guess you'd say, that plays another uh, role into how well the stalls lock in when you go to do them. And last but not least, another one of everyone's favorites, we will look at the lunar balance hole and whether or not a kendama has one of those. Kendamas are pretty bottom heavy. There's a lot more wood usually on this area of the kendama. And so kendamas with the lunar balance hole allow that uh, center of gravity to sort of fall toward the spike, right? And so it gives it a lot more balance uh, this way instead of kind of being bottom heavy and falling off uh, to this side. So a lunar balance hole, if you're a lunar person and those are your tricks, sometimes this can be a great addition to the kendama and just help you lock those lunars in a little bit easier. So those are all the parts of the kendamas that we're gonna look at. We're only gonna look at three. Uh, we'll look at a small shape, a medium shape, and a large shape, and we will talk about uh, how they feel for my play style, and maybe that'll help you decide if they are right for your play style as well. So let's jump right in. Okay, so the first kendama we're gonna look at is the Kenko Shenzu shape. And this is uh, one of those old school 2006-2007 size kendama. Shout out to my buddy Zach Finch. Go give that man a follow at ZBF. The dude is a slayer. Starting with the height of this kendama, it is 160 millimeters from base cup to the top of the spike. That is a pretty standard size for these entry level or smaller kendamas. Um, and most of the like generic kendamas that you'll buy today will probably be similar to this size. When I'm holding it in my sort of normal can grip position, it doesn't get anywhere near the bottom of my palm. So yeah, height wise, this thing is tiny. The weight on the Shenzhou comes in at a 62 gram Tama and a 60 gram Ken. Now those are pretty close. Uh, in terms of weight matching, but this is a very light kendama. So when I'm throwing this thing around, it basically feels like air. I, I don't. There's no sort of substantial feeling at all. I prefer a heavier kendama, somewhere up in that 70 gram-ish uh, range. And so this kendama definitely feels very light. Now that said, this is a bamboo kendama. So the wood type is gonna matter when it comes to weight. Make sure you go check out the wood episode. This is much too light for my play style uh, and the way that I like my kendamas to feel. The size size of the Tama on this is 55 millimeters. For me, with my larger hands, I like a larger Tama. Like the GT2, I think, is 10 millimeters larger than that. It's like 62 millimeters or something. It's really big and it feels a lot better um, in my hand. So just something to consider. If you've got a smaller hand, a smaller Tama might work for you. But if you have a larger hand, uh, you know, it just really depends. You might want a larger Tama or you might want a smaller Tama, but it's something to look at. And this 55 millimeter Tama is uh, gonna be a pretty standard Tama size, I think, for entry level Kendamas uh, and that sort of thing. The bevel size on this Kendama is 19 millimeters in diameter. And so this is a very small bevel. I find this Kendama pretty hard to, to spike. Um, so bevel size is definitely something you wanna look at. Oftentimes it's not listed when you buy a Kendama, so it's kind of one of those things that you gotta pick it up and play it. Get yourself a good pair of calipers, measure the bevels on your Kendamas, figure out which size you like. This one at 19 millimeters, much too small for me. The height of the spike on this Kendama is 43 millimeters. I guess this feels pretty standard. I think that that's a pretty regular spike height, nothing special to note there. I think it's important to note that over time, as you play the Kendama and as you land spikes and this continues to smash down on the Serato, uh, the spike length gets a little bit longer again it's one of those things that you got to kind of feel out on each shape I think this uh, 43 millimeter spike is a pretty standard size and um, it feels right on this kendama let's talk about the size of these cups Move this man! Move! 
These cups are really small. On this Kendama, the big cup comes in at 38 millimeters, small cup at 34 millimeters, and the base cup 32 millimeters. They're pretty small in comparison to the other Kendamas that we're gonna look at. And as mentioned before, that just makes it really difficult to get it to land on these cups. I find this Kendama just hard to play overall. Cup sizes are really small on this thing. And that's what you're gonna get with these old school Kendamas. So shout out to all the players from like 06, 07 that had to play on stuff like this. Cause uh, yeah, it's not easy. Uh, the Serato width is going to be 2.7 inches. This is not a very wide Serato, and uh, that makes tricks like Underbirds definitely a little bit more difficult. Um, same thing really goes for birds and any stall point that's up there on the Serato. If it's a little wider, it has a little more area to lean in, making it a little bit easier. Yeah, if you're looking for a smaller Kendama, I'd say look at a Sweets Prime, maybe a Chrome Pop. Uh, those are going to be smaller sizes uh, for players that are looking for a small size but still on a modern kendama shape. Alright, so for a good mid-size kendama, we're going to take a look at the Sweets Boost shape. Uh, very popular shape, super popular kendama. This is the Christian Frazier Decade Mod. Uh, legend Mod? Uh, that's debatable. I think it's Legend Mod. But regardless, it's on the boost shape, and I think this is a great shape for a, a wide variety of players. The height on this shape is 165 millimeters, uh, about six and a half inches, and that is a five millimeter increase from the last shape that we looked at. But that makes a huge difference, and I can definitely tell it's, it's larger. Um, I still prefer a larger or a taller shape than this, uh, but it still feels good, and I play this Kendama every day. Uh, the Tama on this is a 60 millimeter Tama, and I think that's a pretty standard size. Uh, it feels pretty good in my hand. And that is another five millimeter increase from the previous Kendama that we looked at. So the weight on this is uh, 76 gram Tama, 74 gram Ken. So they are pretty evenly matched up in terms of weight. Uh, and that feels great when I'm doing juggles. That's kind of where I like my weights to be uh, in that 70-ish range. So for me, weight wise, this is uh, a great balanced Kendama. This has a spike height of 45 millimeters. Um, and that's pretty standard. This spike height feels good for me. I don't tend to have any problems getting it uh, horizontal for the J-stick motion. Um, I think 45 millimeters is uh, what you'll find on a pretty wide range of, of Kendama. So a pretty standard 45 millimeter spike height there. So the cup sizes on this, we got a big cup of 37 and a half millimeters. That's five millimeters larger than the other Kendama. And so you notice a huge difference. Small cup is 33 millimeters in diameter. Uh, that's a four millimeter increase from the previous Kendama. And we have a base cup of we have a base cup of 30 millimeters, which is roughly the same uh, as the last Kendama, surprisingly. I think it's one millimeter larger. Noticeably, these cups are bigger. As soon as you pick it up, you can, you can eyeball the cups and see that they're bigger than the last Kendama. And that is kind of what has changed over time the most, is the cup sizes and how easy it is to do, you know, to land it in the cups and to do stuff like Lunars. The Serato on this uh, is three inches wide, and so that's just a quarter inch um, wider than the previous Kendama, but you can definitely tell the difference when it comes to doing stuff like gunslingers or any of the slinger tricks. That little bit of a difference gives just a little more room to be able to do those tricks. Um, this bevel, which I failed to mention earlier, is actually a 20 millimeter bevel, and that's smaller than I expected on the Sweets Boost. This is a pretty small bevel. Uh, that said, I think it was it's well made for those stall points, and it does lock in pretty well. I think um, out of the box, that 20 millimeter bevel, it felt small, but it felt right for these particular stall points. So uh, not a lot to say there. I think it's a pretty good size. This Ken is a pretty regular size Ken. It's not too slim uh, right here. I like the feel of this. I think this is a pretty standard uh, size. I, I'm just saying like, some of them are skinny, some of them what I consider mid-sized, and then up to like a GT, which I would consider pretty thick. This one is sort of mid-sized. Um, it also has the Lunar Balance Hole, which uh, is great. If you like Lunars, I do. And so the Lunar Balance Hole definitely seems to help on this particular shape. Yeah, so that's it for the mid-sized shape, or the Sweets uh, Boost. I think this is an excellent shape, uh, no matter what hand size you have. If you aren't really into you know, having a preference yet, I think it's a good size so that you can just kind of get a feel for a larger Kendama. If you are interested in other mid-size shapes, I would say something like a Kendama USA craft shape. Those tend to be in this mid-size. Uh, but Sweets Boost, 
uh, is always a good choice and they have all kinds of different um, paints and varieties of the boost shape so definitely take a look uh, at one of those okay and last but not least we're gonna take a look at one of the larger shapes that I have or have played recently and this is the new uh, chrome Jody Barton UFO uh, on their AK shape this is the chrome's newest shape and it to me is pretty big it's like a massive shape it feels really good in my hand though and i do enjoy uh juggling and tossing this shape around just because it's so much bigger than the other kendamas uh that i own so this comes in at 170 millimeters of height that's very tall it's tall five millimeters taller than the sweets uh 10 millimeters taller than the kendamako shenzu and uh you can definitely tell when you hold it in your hand so if you saw before uh, most of those didn't really extend anywhere near down to the bottom of my palm here. This one is starting to get really close and it feels really good in my hand. I'm able to get a good grip on it, kind of like a hammer, I guess. Uh, and this is about the height of a kendama that, that I like, about this 170 millimeter range. Just feels right in my hand for sure. We see another 55 millimeter tama here. Again, that's pretty standard. The size of the tamas, I don't think changes a whole lot between shapes. Um, something like the GT, I think, again, it gets into the, a larger tama even than this. But 55 millimeters is, is cool. It feels good. Um, nothing, nothing much to say about that except uh, it's worth looking at when you're looking at the specs for the kendama that you're going to buy to see if you're getting a big uh, tama or a you know a regular size like 55 millimeter one uh, so the weight on this came out to be a 74 gram tama 70 gram can so it's a little off on the weights but not a huge deal um, i like these weights uh, in that 70 ish area so it feels good for me when i'm doing juggles and stuff like that but if you like lighter kendamas you'll be in that 60 ish uh side when it comes to weights and this might feel a little heavy for you uh, just something to consider always weigh your kendamas when you get them in the mail I throw throw them right on the scale uh, and see what the weights are like the spike height on this one is 46 millimeters I think there's like a one millimeter difference that could be chalked up to human error uh, it could also be that the other spike was played down just a little bit uh, but it's pretty close I think it is a little skinnier than most of the spikes that I'm used to playing on um, that hasn't made much of an impact in the play style of this kendama uh, but again it feels is really good when you're doing j-sticks i guess you can kind of uh, the size of this bevel which we haven't talked about yet but it's a pretty large bevel and uh you can feel that the j-stick sort of is it wants to slide out of there um a little easier but given the length of the spike it doesn't i haven't experienced that yet so it's a good length for this particular shape of kendama i think it's well made so that you don't really have to worry about it kind of falling out on the j-stick there so we got the big cup coming in at 36 millimeters i think just a little bit smaller than the boost actually small cup coming in at 34 and a half millimeters a little bit bigger than the boost and the base cup coming in at 30 millimeters the stall points are each nine millimeters and so that's a two millimeter difference and they also have a slight a slight slope to them that i found makes it a little weird uh to get my birds up on this thing we see another three inch serato here uh in width which makes gunslingers feel really smooth on this kendama and also the spike width on this is super slim right here up toward where the serato meets uh the spike and so there's a lot of room for your finger to do slingers right up underneath there but that said serato width is cool Gunslingers are pretty easy. Um, if you're into that kind of thing, this is a great shape. We got a 23 millimeter bevel, and that is wide. That's three millimeters wider than the uh, Swedes Boost. That definitely makes it a little weird to get it up on that small stall point and get it to stick. But uh, yeah, again, probably just a matter of me playing with this Kendama more uh, and getting that. Uh, getting used to the wide bevel with the thin, uh, the thin stall points. So that's it for the large shape. Uh, if you are looking to get yourself a large shape, I think the analog squab 2020 shape is pretty big and amazing. And of course the GT2, uh, you can't talk about big kendamas without talking about that thing. I think that's one of the larger kendamas that I own. So if you got big hands um, and you're out there in the market for a kendama, look at those. Definitely check out this Chrome Jody Barton. They, they've had these on the site lately available and it feels feels really good in a, in a larger hand if you're into a slimmer, taller kendama shape. So that's it, y'all. That's the shapes episode. I think we talked about pretty much like every piece of the kendama that we can talk about. One thing uh, that I didn't mention in this episode is this ring stall, commonly referred to as the least used part of a kendama. Not something that I measured or put into this episode because I don't think a lot of people really uh, care that much but if you do 
measure it. It does change in different shapes. It can slope sometimes, it can be a little thicker sometimes. In some cases, it cannot have a ring stall at all. There is a few of those kendamas floating around. Of course, as I always mention, do your research. Try to look at the specs on the kendama before you buy it, if you can, so that you can get a feel for it. Or you could be like me and be a complete addict and buy every single kendama dropper you can possibly get. Uh, to try to get a feel for the different kendama shapes and sizes that you like. It does just take time and playing with them to get a feel for it. Um, even if, you know, I know this episode was a lot about like hand shapes and sizes, but even folks with larger hands sometimes like a smaller, lighter kendama. It's just a matter of preference and a matter of getting out and trying them. Uh, but if there's anything else you want to know about kendamas that I own or uh, anything about the specs in my collection, drop me a comment, let me know. I'd be happy to chat with y'all and let you know what I got going on. Uh, otherwise, man, it's been so nice to have all y'all back with me. I will really be trying to put more content up here. I know I said I'd be doing some unboxings as well, but I think, you know, there's a lot of unboxings around, so I'll be looking to do some more of this, like, educational content. Uh, I got some stuff up my sleeves, man. Hopefully y'all learned something about Kendama Shapes today that you didn't know before. Tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your wife about Dama Dojo. And, uh, you know, keep spreading that Dama love, baby. So, thanks again for being with me. Smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, follow me on IG, at Skippy So Drippy, Dama Dojo, episode three, the Shapes episode. It's been real, y'all. We'll see y'all next time. Peace. Starting this one over. Cut.